because it is truly perfect for today. And uh, I know that some of you know that during this week, it was my birthday. And we, we celebrate according to something called birthday rules here at our house. And part of birthday rules is that when your birthday is in the middle of the week instead of on the weekend, you get to choose which weekend is going to be your celebration weekend. And so this is it. And uh, I, I was overjoyed to hear that Scott would be performing today and, um, and bringing his special gifts to uh, this day of celebration for me. And for those of you who don't know, I am Reverend Ann Ray, and I have the enormous privilege of getting to serve this fantastic community, the Everyday Center for Spiritual Living, as its senior minister. So what are we talking about today? We've, we've really traveled a lot of important road this past month because my theme was I am willing to be teachable. And we began by taking a look at equality, at privilege, at racism. And this week our question is, and our answer is, I'm willing to be teachable about diversity. What is diversity? And as Jean has addressed in her beautiful um, words this morning and Scott addressed in his song, really we're only love. Simply put, diversity is what makes each of us unique. Sure, there are official definitions, many of them, that include lists and labels. And in my opinion, it's like trying to find the perfect, all-encompassing name for the unnameable that which we call the universe, God, spirit, the one. There is no perfect name because the perfect name in and of itself is limiting. And so we use the name that we are most comfortable with, don't we? Diversity is way beyond naming anything. Diversity is that which makes all things in the manifest universe have that distinguishing special something. The activity of creating itself through itself is clearly so much fun. Why make two of anything exactly the same, including twins? because they aren't, you know, even identical. Twins are not exactly the same. The word so often paired with diversity in today's conversation is inclusion. And the slippery slope here is the mere suggestion that there is, of course, exclusion. I recently went, by the way, to the spiritual truth department, which occupies the top floor of the principal building. Let me say that again. I recently visited the spiritual truth department, which occupies the entire top floor of the principal building. Are you with me? 
and exclusion was nowhere to be found. So am I being facetious? Not at all. Do I not know that exclusion has been a belief, a behavior, a choice for at least 300,000 years? Of course. In fact, I've been talking about it in lots of ways. And its effects have been brutal and devastating. Yes, I know that too. There is no question that some or many human beings have forgotten their nature, their source, their divine origin and appointment. Because we all have one, you know. We all have a divine appointment. And it's not the same one. It's part of our uniqueness. What they have forgotten, listen up now. Okay, it's seatbelt time. Somebody asked me to remind you to fasten your seatbelts like you needed reminding. It's seatbelt time. What they have forgotten does not change or diminish their potential for remembering and becoming all that they were born to be. It can happen at any time in someone's life where they remember what they have forgotten and they step in to who they are today. Also, what they have forgotten and the choices they make are not where my focus belongs. What I know and will continue to affirm is the one life. One that is all life. Its presence in and as and through me is mine to experience express and reveal in ways that align with my divine nature, which happens to be, no matter what, joyful, expansive, and life-affirming in ways that are uniquely me. But, I hear someone saying, but, 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 diversity and inclusion are real issues. Just because a bunch of humans agree that these are issues doesn't make them real. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody stay on the call. Everybody stay in the service. Wait, just wait. What I'm saying is that these are all human constructs. Oppression is a human construct. Brutality is a human construct. The divisiveness that we are experiencing in the world today is a human construct. And once enough people change their mind about it, it goes away like it was never here. Now I know there's aftermath, but right now we're not talking about aftermath. We're talking about being in the moment and what is so. If it is our intention to hold ourselves to the highest in us, then why in the world would we agree with the reality 
of anything that is artifice. Because, you know, principle, universal truth doesn't change, hasn't changed, won't change. Those laws, those ways of understanding how, how life behaves doesn't change, hasn't changed, won't change. No matter how much we change our mind no matter how much we change our mind. And it's important for us to keep that in mind because that is our call. Oh, but, but wait, wait, look at the evidence. Look at all the evidence. Hmm. Well, let me say this about that. The study and practice of principle tells us both through ancient teachings, modern teachings, very relevant, present, up to the minute teachings, as well as that which we have read along the way as we have been evolving in our understanding of what this philosophy is and 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 how it supports us the study and practice of principle tells us that evidence is merely a reflection of yesterday's thinking now maybe there were a lot of yesterdays in a row with the same thinking okay It doesn't give it any more substance. It doesn't give the agreement. It doesn't give the appearance any more substance than we give it. Have people suffered at the hand of these beliefs? Of course. Was their suffering not real? Is their suffering not real? Of course it is. That isn't the question. The question is, what are we going to buy into that's real? What are we going to support as reality with our intention, with our attention, with our energy? What what are we going to be distracted by on a however frequent basis? that further convinces us about the awfuls and the olds and the reality of all of that when we could be focused elsewhere. Reflections of yesterday's thinking. That's a big topic. It's a big topic individually. It's a big topic generally. And I just want to say a little more about it because yesterday's thinking includes, and by the way, yesterday's thinking, when it, it becomes a cultural belief or, or a national experience, or even within the environment of our own family. Yesterday's thinking includes hierarchies, caste systems, misogyny, xenophobia, and every other human crafted attempt at dividing that which is indivisible. We forget that we are one in the indivisible. These fear and ego driven structures seem to have been around forever, don't they? Which is why they seem inevitable. It can feel like, well, we just, we just move this oppressive system from this place to that place, but there's always going to be an oppressive system. And 
If you say so, that can be true for you. But it is not true for me. You know, the thing is that not one of those systems has lasted. Not one. No matter how many hundreds of years or thousands of years we can point to and say, well, it happened here, and then it happened again here, and then it happened again here, and then it happened again here. What about the gaps in between? Not one lasted. Or we would still all be running around in togas. That could be interesting. And as long as the jewelry is good, I guess I'm okay with that. All right, so back to the point. Why does it feel like this serious misuse of the power within will never change? But rather find even more unimaginable ways to inflict itself on whoever or whatever is perceived to be in the way. Why does it feel that way? Because we don't have as much history focusing our attention elsewhere. We don't. We don't. We have grown up with generation upon generation upon generation informing who we are today. And so much of that is an enormous blessing. And some of it is, um, we'll just say a gift that came, it was part of the package. But it, while it was gifted, it wasn't such a great thing necessarily to receive. When was the last time any of us felt caught in a judgment? Just really caught up in a judgment. When was the last time? Half hour ago? Last night? When? Recently, I would imagine for all of us, a judgment about something or someone. When was the last time any one of us could personally change someone else's behavior or choice? Exactly. We can't but we focus our attention there. If they'd only this, if they'd only that, if they'd only not this, if they'd only not that, we focus our attention there. What in the world are we doing with this one precious, fabulous, exhilarating life? My thoughts, my, my choice, and my focus, if I want to feel in control, that's exactly what I can control. My thoughts, my feelings, and my focus. And what I do with it all. I am the center and circumference of what I truly control. Really, that's it. And I know that that makes a lot of us really uncomfortable. I wonder what would happen if we could let go, just, just even ever so gently, of some of that discomfort, of some of that resistance, of some of that desire to be in control of others, and, and just 
think about what we're thinking about and what it is we want to be thinking about. So I, I bet you can guess now how any one person can actually affect beneficial and lasting change. Yep, you're right. By putting our focus, our attention, and our energy on the one thing we can control. As tired as you may be of hearing this, please, please step into who you are today. Only as who you are today, entertain the new, the seemingly absurd, even laughable thoughts that cross your mind. I'll let you in on a secret. The absurdity and laughter are road signs. They're marking the way to a vortex of truth in each of us. In each of us. My truth is not your truth. Some of what I may say resonates as true for you, but that's true for you. It's the vortex of truth in each of us where creation happens. You know, it's interesting, this vortex place. While we can access it at any time, Actually entering the chamber where the irrepressible in all its enthusiasm is just waiting for our permission. In order to enter that chamber, we must first say yes. We must first say yes. What does saying yes require? Stepping aside as the person we are today from all of the things that we are saying no to because they're wrong, they're screwed up, they're a mess, they're whatever it is. I'm, I, 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 <laughs> I can't insist strongly enough that this is where change can happen. This is where change does happen. This is where we become so loaded. It's like a computer that has every kind of software you could possibly ever need, which by the way, we do already, but this tells us how to use it all and how to make it work together and how to be that force for good that we intend. What are we saying yes to? To give permission to the irrepressible. What are we saying yes to? We're saying yes to our own change. Our own change not someone else's, to our own opening, not someone else's, to our own willingness, not someone else's, to our own discernment, to our own intuition, to our own wisdom. If we look at our planet from space, we can tell water from land and that's about it. There are no borders, no identifiable viruses, no other illnesses that we can see. 
no wars, no weapons. There's only the one. There's only the world. And our physical experience is very different. The question is, how long before we just say, oh, the heck with it. Today, I am undistractable. Just for today. I am stepping into the now, unencumbered by conditions and circumstances surrounding me. I'm going to see how new I can be. How long before we do this? I'm going to see how new I can be if I really let myself be new. I'm going to take the path less traveled and bring my life and fellow being loving consciousness and say thank you every step of the way. I leave you with this. A poem by Janice Ballard. I know the truth. I know the truth when I see it, filling all the spaces inside with light, a monochromatic palette transforming before me into an inclusive riot of colors, pixel by pixel falling softly before my inner and outer eyes capturing beauty and holding it before me, noticing all subtleties, a message without doubt or fear. I know the truth when I hear it, resounding with waves of sincere amends, spoken in whispers gently, and confidently falling syllable by syllable on my ears, like wide open spaces of gentle winds carrying particles of resonance and trust. I know the truth when I feel it. Stepping into and through new doors, always flung wide open and inviting me to come forth, embracing what lies before me. Standing on the shoulders of sages and enlightened ones. Touch and the deep warmth of knowing. Inhaling energy. exhaling belief and so it is and so we move into a time of acknowledging all possibility The one life, the, the one presence that is our very essence. My essence, your essence, the essence of everything and everyone, the essence of all that has been and all that is yet to be. the inner vortex of truth that is this essence that houses the irrepressible that is just waiting for our permission to 
be out to reveal itself by means of us. Unencumbered by any doubts, any conditions, any circumstances, any appearances that there are any limitations of any kind. Because what is ours to do, what I know is ours to do, is to see beyond those appearances so that we can call forward that which reveals wholeness, that which reveals the life, the light that is in all. We call it a miracle when something devastating is, seems to be on its way and then, and then it changes course. We call it a miracle when one minute there is a, a diagnosis or an, a scan that shows some kind of uh, life-threatening illness and the next time there's a scan or a blood test or whatever it is, it appears to be gone. We call it a miracle. We have no idea how ordinary that is. We have no idea because we, we hold it back. And what I affirm for myself and all of us right here and now is the holding back is over. I am saying yes. I am saying yes for all of us, whether everybody's ready or not. I am saying yes to allowing all that life can be by means of us to come through us, to show us the way, to show us the next steps, to show us where we can really make a difference, to show us how to make that difference, and to show us how to be in joy and in love and enraptured by this privilege of living at this time, at this specific time so that we can be the change agents we were assigned to be. In deepest gratitude for all those who are ready to get on board and for all those who are not, I release this word to its fulfillment which I know is already done. As together we affirm, and so it is.